Good afternoon and welcome to my whip parade. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this floss tube number 12 so that people, if they're watching, if they're a completionist and they want to make sure they've watched everything, they'll know where it falls in line with things. So um, it's still January 8th when I'm filming this. I have no idea when it'll get posted. Um, I don't actually know how many whips I have. Um, and I'm going to say that there's a possibility that there may be some things in this video that are a little screwy. Like I, I'm going to have to show a lot of pictures because some of my patterns are are things I have only PDFs of or came out of digital magazines or whatever. And I'll want to show what the, for the most part, I'm going to try to show what the patterns look like, um, what they'll look like um, when they're finished. So there will be a lot of, I'm going to show you a picture of what it looks like now. And, um, and it's possible that a couple of those things may go wrong. Like... I may say I'm going to show a picture and then I don't or whatever because I haven't gotten been super duper organized about this because I just I don't want to <laughs> and um, so I may like find that I can't find a picture or whatever but for the most part I think I can so we're just gonna go for it um, and that'll be that so um, if you're totally new here my name on Instagram my name is Christine and on Instagram I am CMD as in cat mother dog Five eight six. So if you're on Instagram, find me over there. Um, I post um, several times a week with my progress, and I do post occasional non cross stitch things. But it's a uh, at least like ninety five percent cross stitch. So um, so uh, that'll be a good place to 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 check out more um, close up pictures of of, uh, of the work I do. Meanwhile, this is my this is my whip parade. This is all of the whips I have going um, currently and I don't have any idea how many they are. So, uh, let's just get going. Um, I There's not gonna be in any particular order. I'll give details as I have them. I don't know how long this video is going to be. We'll see how inclined I am to talk in depth about any of them. Uh, I'm just gonna do whatever, you know, whatever I feel like doing as it comes up. So, um, the first one I'm gonna show you is my Riolis Beagle Kit. I talked extensively about this kit and Realist in general a few videos back. Um, so if you are curious about the fine details of this kit and Realist kits in general, um, there's a lot of, I think, pretty good detailed information on, on that video. And I think there's, in my description of the video, it says something about Realist. So um, if you're wondering about Realist, um, go watch that video because I think I, you know, I've tried to, to give some pretty thorough information and I don't want to reiterate that here. So, um, that is the, what it's going to look like when it's finished. And here's where I am now. So, um, quite a bit left still to do, but I've made respectable progress on this one. Um, I was working on it last back in, I don't know, I'm going to say like July or something. Was it? So it's been a while since I've touched it, but when I worked on it, then I made huge progress. I like I almost thought I might just keep going and finish. You know, sometimes that happens to me with big projects. Is though, as I think, oh, I'm just gonna keep going and finish it, and then and then suddenly I burn out, so I don't. Um, you know, um, occasionally, occasionally, um, I surprise myself and keep going and finish it. Finish something I wasn't expecting, but a lot of times, like with something big like that, you're going and going and going, and you tell yourself. Oh, I'm just not going to put this down until it's done. And, and then suddenly you burn out. So another... Now this... This is almost a UFO. I believe I have worked on it this year, but um, I am contemplating UFOing it. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. I do want to do it. Let me show you a picture of what it looks like, what it will look like when it's finished. Um... But, um, love the project, but after I started working on this project, I then discovered Blit Stitch's method of diagonal parking, and I really hate that I'm not using that on this project, and it's really kind of too late to do that. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need to start over. So I just might, even though I've gotten a good, significant chunk done on it. I just don't like it. I'm feeling un... Feeling like I don't want to work on it, so I might have to start it over. I really haven't decided. I might pick it up once again and see how I feel when I'm working on it. Um, it's called um, Stroke of Midnight. This is my one and only Teresa Wensler currently. 
um, Stroke of Midnight. And I've gotten, you know, I've gotten a good chunk in of it, but it doesn't call to me because I just want to do, I want to do, this is an overwhelming project. It's, it's full coverage and there's lots of fractionals and stuff like that. And I, and it's coming together well. It looks nice. But I really think I need, I really think I would enjoy it so much more if I was using blitz stitch, stitches method on it, which is the diagonal parking method. I'm not parking on this at all. I tried parking on it. I started out parking like in the first, um, up near in the first, up in the first corner. I started out with parking. I got maybe a couple hundred stitches in with parking and I was like, no, that's not for me. I can't handle that. Um... I know people swear by it, it's fine. It just doesn't work for me. So I went to cross country. And this is just, there's a lot of confetti and this is an overwhelming project. And um, and so I went to page by page, but I was still doing sort of cross country. Um, and, then, uh, and then I discovered Blitz Stitches Method. And I'm reluctant to do, um, this is the first page and then this is, the second page so the first you know I'm doing it page by page to not be completely overwhelmed uh, but I haven't done any of the back stitch or anything but I just don't it's not calling to me I don't I don't it hasn't called to me in months because um because I just don't like the fact that I'm not doing doing blitz stitches method on it so I'm contemplating starting over entirely um I hesitate to do that because I've gotten so much done but if it's not calling to me I think I may need to 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 do it. Who is it? Nicole's Needlework, who's always restarting things. <laughs> Not kind of percent happy with it, so she restarts it, and I always think, oh my God, she's got so much done, and she's restarting it. And um, but I think I have to. I think I might have to. So this may count as a UFO. I am not a hundred percent decided, but you know, it's sat it sat you know for a long time just not doing anything, and I think I think I need to I think I need to address that, and I might just have to completely restart on on different fabric and and start right at the beginning with blitz stitches diagonal because I love his method and I'm doing several projects with his method I'll talk more about that as I as I bring those projects up and um sorry <laughs> got a couple of things in like big cases and then everything else is in a big bin with um with bags um, so nothing fancy. I just use the giant Ziploc bags for the most part. Um, so this is, um, this one is called, um, Come by the Hills. Um, this is by Ship's Manor. And, um, I think it was originally published as a series in magazine, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and what it is, is a a village that goes from season to season. It starts with um, winter and then spring, then summer, then fall. And I have winter entirely finished and a good start on spring. And um, so it's gonna be quite long. Um, and it's really beautiful. It's got that Charles Wysocki-ish kind of look to it. And um, and I am using Blitz Stitches diagonal parking method with this. I'm being a little bit, um, I'm not following all the rules. I don't always follow all the rules with his parking method in general, but in particular on this one, I'm not following all the rules because this um, this pattern, each of the seasons in the village, there is one specialty fiber, um, like a gaster or a weeks or something like that though. So there's four, four of them throughout the whole project. And um, parking, of course, in general, uses more, uses more thread. And so in the case of those though, uh, those expensive fibers, I don't want to, um, I do not want to waste any of them. So I'm using those, like see this green, this sort of slightly variegated, beautiful parrotish green one is one of those specialty um, flosses and I don't want to waste any of it. So um, that I'm kind of snaking out and then the rest I'm, I'm diagonal parking. And I just, it, it I really love using using the part, his, his method. So if you haven't checked out Blitz Stitches, um, he has floss tube and he has, he has a, a video about it, but he also has a blog post about it. So whichever you learn better from, um, you should check that out. And he has several like, you know, rules and stuff he uses 
to do his diagonal parking method. And I just use what work, the pieces of it that work for me. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna open my big bin <laughs> of unknown numbers of whoops. Ooh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna hit. My husband's good, my husband's got a good light set up for me. And I don't know if I can lean. Okay, I was leaning the lid of this uh, this thing because it it flips up, and it was gonna hit the light. Um, but it looks like the light is heavy duty enough that it can it can withstand <laughs> it can withstand the lightweight lid leaning against it. Um, okay, so there's no particular order to this, <laughs> so just gonna go for it. Um, first thing out of the bin is my death by cross stitch. And um, let's see, I think I have a, a picture of the whole thing in here. It's not a very good picture, but it'll be good enough. It's not like y'all haven't seen a thousand different pictures of this. So this is Death by Cross Stitch as it will look finished. It's a 16 page, I believe, yeah, four across, four down. I believe it's 16 pages. Um, and I have completed four pages of it. In a recent video I showed that I finished four pages. So I've done the, I've done the first four pages. And I'm so in love with this. I'm using 36 count platinum. I'm doing it two over two. I am using Threadworks floss. I'm using two different Threadworks flosses. It is a little bit arbitrary, but my idea was that I wanted the things that I considered to be borders, which you could argue about what's borders and what's not. Things that I considered to be borders, I wanted in the darker floss, which in this case is Mediterranean. And the stuff that is, um, not borders, like the inside stuff, is blue swirl. And I'm using about even amounts of both so far in the four, first four pages of the pattern. I'm using the 20 yard skeins, which are very economical. Um, and Threadworks is beautiful. And they cut it, the Threadworks floss is, it comes pre-cut, which first I was bothered by, but it turns out that they cut their flosses to exactly a, a great length. I can get about 100 stitches on 36 count. I can get about 100 stitches out of each length of floss, um, doing one stitch at a time, because most of the time, you know, that's what you do with um, variegated floss. That is not an absolute. Um, it's totally fine not to do that. Um, but um, with most projects, with most projects, even though it uses extra floss, which I don't like, um, to get the maximum obvious variegation, I go with the one stitch at a time, at a time method. Um, I have, though, used other methods like um, not doing one, one stitch at a time. Sometimes when you have plants or something, it's kind of nice to have that more natural modeled look, the subtler look, um, or, um, you know, there's a variety of things you can do. So don't let me tell you you have to do one stitch at a time. Um, every time because you don't have to um, it just creates a different effect if you choose not to uh, but in the case of this one I'm doing one um, one stitch at a time all right next is my other realist kit and um, this one I always hate showing this one because it's gonna be wonderful when it's done but it um, has a lot it has a lot of subtlety to it like there's a lot of okay so here's a picture of the finished project there is some blank space of just, um, where just like oatmeal type fabric shows through, but a lot of this is like whites and creams and light pinks and beiges on an oatmeal fabric. So it doesn't look like much as you're doing it, but nevertheless, I'll show you where I am. Okay, I'm <laughs> just making sure I got it right. So this is where I am. So, you know, I've made a fair amount of progress. I still have a lot to do, um, but that is that. I love the Realist kits. So if you have any curious curiosity about them at all, um, please go back if you haven't yet and watch the video where I talk about Realist kits because um, because they're, they're really worthwhile. They're really worthwhile. So um, I just love them. Okay, um, but before you just buy them, it, you know, particularly if you're buying older ones off of eBay and things, it's a good idea. They're different. So it's a good idea to get some like knowledge about them. So you know what you're getting into before you, before you get them, but they're very worthwhile. Okay. Next. 
So this one is a Sweetheart Tree Kit, which I could finish up within a couple of days probably. This is a picture of the finished project. It is W is for Witch. I would like to do all of these. I have done a um, I is for Ivy. It's very similar. There, It's a series that's all very similar to this. Basically, they have the letter and then they have a main motif in the center. And then they have, you know, several of the letters. And then they have a border that's not identical but very similar on each of them. There's a few specialty stitches, like usually some Rhodes hearts and some herringbone and, and stuff like that. Um, they're all done on khaki 28 count cashel. Um, the kits are about $25 retail. They come in a really nice little case that holds all of it. Um, they come with the beads and the floss and there's usually some pearl. Anything you need. It's mostly DMCs, but it comes with everything you need, including this little piece of fabric. And it fits pretty decently in a Mill Hill 6x6 frame. So all of that's good. And um, I got mine for about $20 on sale. The two I have, I've gotten for about $20 on sale. The full retail is around $25, which seems kind of expensive for these little things when you compare them to something like a Mill Hill kit. But you know, they're really nice and they come in a nice little case and they come with all the specialty stuff and they're, they're really nice. And this kind of fabric is more expensive than perforated paper. So I only worked on this a day or two when I first got it out for a sale. I haven't touched it in a long time. I could probably finish it. Next time I take it out, I'll probably finish it because it's really only a couple of days work probably um, um, to do the whole thing. Um, and, and like on a Sunday or Monday or whatever when I have off and nothing better to do, I could maybe even finish them in one day. So um, there's just not much, not much to this one and I should really get on it. Um, so I'm putting it away. I'm putting things away as I go, which means mean this video takes forever. But that's okay. You can always watch me. Watch me on, feel free to watch me on one and a half speed. Um, but then I'm, I'm not taking that into account when I hold up pictures and stuff. So you may not, you may not want to, you know, you may not, if you don't pay close attention, you may not see things for as long as you want. So, um, next I have one of my, one of my few. Um, hot air balloon projects. This one is called Balloon Over Tuscany. It's an old, uh, it says 1998. It's an older thing. Got it from Stash Unload. And here's my progress. I have mixed feelings about this one. I like it and I don't like it. Um, I'm using cheap fabric on it. I believe it's 28 count. Um, my, I love those dark red ribbons. I think they're beautiful. Um, my mixed feelings are about the half stitching that is going on in the bulk of the balloon, as you can see it. Those are not uncompleted stitches, those are half stitches. And I know what they're going for, and I'm hoping that I'll really like it in the end. But basically, they're going for the effect of a blown up balloon. It's supposed to look thin. And so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I like it in the end. It is, it is, um, somewhat fast to do as long as you don't make mistakes um but it's just eh, i'm not uh, not absolutely loving it um but um i like pieces of it it's just i didn't know when i bought it i probably would have bought it anyway but i didn't know when i bought it that it was that it was half stitching i'm not sure what i might have done differently probably nothing probably still would have done it i'm hoping i like it so there's that um Next, I have Hallowed Halloween, I think is what this is called. And I actually have the physical magazine. Most of my magazine patterns currently are, are, um, <laughs> okay, don't, don't consider more things you want to start, Christine. Just get to the, get to the point. Um, most of my ma magazine patterns are, it's dangerous to flip through magazines, um, are, um, digital. Um, so I don't always have them to, to show, but in this case, I do actually have the real thing. And I'm going to sound like a broken record because last time I showed this pattern, I was like, oh, I should have marked that, shouldn't I? And of course I didn't, and I didn't again. And, uh, but there it is. So, Hallowed Halloween. It's inspired by those vintage Halloween postcards and greeting cards. That's it. 
I have a hard time working on this project because I um, I hate the fabric I've chosen. It looks great, but it's really difficult to work with. It's super thick, and I end up um, I end up in pain from s stitching on it because I have to push so hard through the fabric. And um, um, but here's where I'm at now. So um, I really like it. It looks beautiful on this fabric, but I will never work on this fabric again. It's an expensive fabric, but it's nice fabric. It's I believe it's MCG natural linen, I think. I think it's I think it's 32 count um, from the look of it. It's really nice looking and it appears to be square, unlike some of the MCG fabrics that are not square. They're more like rectangle. They're not really even. This one appears to be pretty even. Um, although it doesn't look like it's an even weave, it does look like it's a, it is a, a linen of some sort because the threads are uneven, but it's not rectangular, if that makes sense. Um, the stitches still end up square, like with a good linen. Um, but it's just too, it just takes too much oomph to like put every stitch in and I end up hurting. Um, okay, so there's that one. Next one is um, a gold collection, a Dimensions gold collection. This one is Coastal View, right? Coastal View. There's that. I am most of my kits I don't do on on um, on the fabric that comes with them. There's reasons, and I um, when I've talked about my individual kits before, I've gone into all of those reasons. Um, so I won't do that again. But I am doing this on fabric. It was gifted to me by Nell. Um, it's a 28 count, yeah, it's a 28 count, and the tag on it says white linen, but it's kind of a cream color. I don't know if the white linen means white or white linen is a color, um, but it's a 28 count. It, is, it isn't an even weave, it is a linen, and this is how far I've gotten, so I've gotten quite a lot of progress on it. Um, I got a little burnt out though, so I've set this aside for, for a while. But um, I do love it. Um, it's quite uh, quite nice, and I don't. I wish I knew, but I don't know exactly what this linen is. Um, but I do like it. I'm not sure. I wonder. I wonder if maybe it's a, a weeks or something. Um, but it's not. It's not. It's definitely not Zweiger, and it feels different. But it's good. I like it. Um, it feels. It just feels very different. But it's clearly linen. It's not even. So, um, I mean, it, you, know, you know what I mean. It's not an even weave. It's not a L uh, Lugana or Monaco or, or Jovalon, etc. Okay, this one. Oh. oh, I have the picture. Good. Okay. I haven't shown this one on my videos before. This is one I have mixed feelings about. It's definitely not a UFO. It's getting worked on. Um, I, think it, I think it's that I don't love the color combinations in it. Um, so I'm not loving working on it. It is going to be beautiful and quite impressive and full, chock full of beads and treasures and things when it's done. It's going to be really impressive. I think I just, it's just not m as much me as I thought for some reason when I, when I purchased it. I think when I purchased it, I was sort of blinded by the, the fact that it's different even for a Mirabilia, uh, the, the details and things like that, um, and all of the beading and, you know, it's over the top, even as Mirabilia's go. Um, but I think it's just not quite my decor. Um, not that I really even have a decor. <laughs> like, if you saw my house, you'd be like, what are you talking about? You don't have decor. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, it's just not, um, when I'm working on it, I don't love all the colors and stuff like that. But it is turning out good. And I need to get it out again. Um, and, um... I am doing something I think is somewhat smart in that I have not started with the lady. I am working with some of the boring stuff. I started with the top and then I worked my way down to the curtains and stuff like that. It's on the, I believe this is on the called for fabric. So I, you know, I've gotten a good chunk done. And it is beautiful. That Christmas tree is quite beautiful. I just don't, like I just, the colors that are chosen, like the sort of aqua or light teals and stuff and some of the brownish greens and stuff. I just don't love them. I do like the purple curtains and the, you know, I think it's the greens that I don't love and I also don't really love her dress, the sort of pink and black and brown and gray things she's got going on. I don't know. But, um, but it is, it is beautiful. It's just not 100% my thing and I'm not sure why. 
but I am doing it and you know this is not a UFO I am I am doing it and I do like it when I work on it I just uh, not super wholehearted about it um okay so this one it was a gift from um Carla Eldridge my friend Carla Eldridge Lizzie Cates promised me and which is a A.A. A. A. Milne quote Christopher Robin says it to Winnie the Pooh he says promise me you'll always remember you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think which is a lovely sentiment but I like it in particular because it's um because it's Winnie the Pooh it's Christopher Robin saying it to Winnie the Pooh which I think is uh, very touching to me um so she bought me the called for fabric and it, I think it was a kit but all the threads and stuff and the pattern and um I'm doing it on I'm doing it on the called for fabric that came with it but I'm doing it one over one so it's um it's like really small so um and I haven't touched it since I showed it to you last I am uh, in about three days time I got to that point which is slightly over halfway so another two to three days and I could have this thing done um, but, um, but it hasn't called to me recently, so, um, I'm just setting it aside until, until it does. I might, um, it doesn't, it's too bad they don't give you the letters to put Christopher Robin down at the bottom, and I, um, I, w I want to do that, so, um, so I think I'm going to try to put, you know, find a little charted text or whatever that says Christopher Robin, make it say Christopher Robin down at the bottom because I'd like to give it to my mother but the, the the sentiment itself like I don't think she'd know why I was giving it to her she is a fan of things like of Chris of Winnie the Pooh and things like that and she's a sentimental soul but I think she'd think it was sort of odd that it the meaning would make sense to her if she knew it was Christopher Robin otherwise it's just kind of sappy <laughs> And she's like, why are you giving me something so mushy, you know? Um, and not that she's not mushy, but she, but, um, but it's just if I can make it say Christopher Robin, then it makes sense to give to her. If I can't make it say Christopher Robin, then it's kind of like, uh, why are you doing that? <laughs> okay. So, um, and I think the fact that it's a quote by Chris Roman is, is significantly important, and I'm surprised that they don't provide something, you know, for you to add that to the to the project. Um, but I'm sure I can figure it out. Oh, do I not have a picture in this one? I do have a picture of this one somewhere, but I don't. I didn't bring it. So this is um, Frederick the Literate. It's uh, a Charles Wysocki painting that has been um, made into a DMC kit and um, as per my usual I am doing it on my own fabric instead of the really stiff Ada they sent with the kit I am doing it on 28 count black Jobalon which I had in my stash and I, I really love it um, it's uh it's um it's looking it's <laughs> that kitty is so cute and my mother um, I don't know if I'll give this to her or I'll keep it for myself but um, she had a cat for years that was very special and and you know I interacted with the cat too so I think I don't, I don't I don't remember whether I grew up with a cat I don't remember what years we they had the cat but the cat's name was Templeton and he he was so beautiful and he was such a special personality and um, and that cat looks just like that and you know he was the um, they had something like there was a stray cat um and near in my parents' area and it had all these babies and they gathered up the babies and and the mama cat and they and the mama cat became theirs and the babies there was a bunch of them and so like way more than there usually is with cats like seven or eight or something a, a big a kind of a big litter and um and they managed to adopt out all of the other kittens except that one cat and because he was ugly and he was also very wimpy like emotionally wimpy and he <laughs> didn't get as much food as the other cats and stuff like that he was a real wuss and um like maybe mentally not a hundred percent all there but so nobody wanted him 
so they um he was the last and um and so they decided to keep him because because um because he needed love <laughs> and he got to stay with his mama that way too so um so anyway um uh, and but he shaped up into a gorgeous cat like really like when he grew up it was the the ugly duckling becoming the swan thing he just became a beautiful cat and with a very sweet personality i always thought he was maybe a little bit like slow mentally as as cats go um <laughs> but but very sweet and he would do this thing where you'd be petting him and you'd be looking into his eyes and petting him and all of a sudden he would lunge at you but not in a bad way but like to give you a kiss and like you'd be just petting him and he'd be like <laughs> I want to kiss you. I it, like it was just this very sweet. It was and, you know he never bit or growled or anything anything like that. He had a very sweet temperament, but he was just a lover. And um, yeah, he was a he was a special cat. And this cat in it, Frederick the Litter, it looks just like him. And so I don't know if I'll keep it for my own sentimentality or I'll give it to give it to my mother. But um, but that's why I'm doing that one. Um, okay, if you watched my uh, floss tube number eleven. <laughs> which you may or may not have yet. <laughs> um, I already showed this, but this is a whip parade, so I'm showing it again anyway. Wanda's witchery. This is what it'll look like when it's done. Um, this is what it looks like now. Wanda's witchery. Uh, Mill Hill. You know, one of their um, autumn, autumn series, the buttons and beads. Um... I love Mill Hill. I've got several Mill Hill projects still in my stash to, to do. Um, and a few in my whips to do, but still. Okay, um, here is another one I showed earlier today in my floss tube number 11. I feel weird showing it again, but I will. Halloween at Hawkburn Hollow. There's a picture of what it's gonna look like when it's done, except I'm using darker fabric. I'm using ale, 40 count ale. I think they use like 40 count legacy or something. I think it's legacy. Um, it just looked a little too light to me, so I'm doing 40 count ale, and I started with the center, um, center block, which is unusual for me, but it works really well for these, um, blocked patterns, um, from Hawk, Hawk Hollow. Um, and, um, so there is my start on the center block. I got a good chunk of it done. Um, I started this, I intended to start this on Christmas Day this year, but I ended up with the materials a little earlier than that, so I started it um, a couple weeks earlier than that. And um, love it. It's beautiful. I'm doing it in all the MPIs. 40, cu 40 count 1 over 2 on Ale by Picture This Plus, which you may know by now that is one of my favorite fabrics, the Ale by Picture This Plus, a, favorite, a good favorite, not warm neutral um for a favorite warmer hand dyed neutral gingerbread gingerbread's my go-to for a warmer and you'll see that you'll see some gingerbread today okay this is my second um cinderella project it is called oh it's called Bell of the Ball. It's by Shannon Wassily, Fossilia, F I don't know. She's also Shannon, known as Shannon Christine Designs. You can find, um, I think you can get this pattern on her website right now. I got it from a magazine. And here is a picture of what it will look like finished, sort of. Um, in the magazine, they did it, they didn't specify fabric. They did it under something very plain in lilac. And they said 25 count. I'm doing it 28 count. Um, I just didn't want to do it 25 count. I'm doing it, so I'm, it's a little, I'm doing it 28 count on 28 count Monet, which I think is amazing and wonderful for this project. The hesitation I have is that um, there's a lot of black in it. And I think my black looks pretty good. I do DMC 310. In my last video, I did kind of a, a, a speech about why I use 310 instead of Anchor, instead of Anchor Black. Um, but um, in the magazine, they do the black part. Let me, I, I think I'm right about this, that they do everything basically, 
they do everything um i think they do everything over over two but the, the the black is over three or something like that the they use a different count of threads and then maybe over three for all of it and not over three um over two obviously it's 28 count but like three strands and um my i went to tw i went down to 28 count yeah, I think they use three strands. It's something like that. They use 25 count and they use three strands, at least for the black, maybe for all of it. And I went down to 28 count and I don't want to do three strands. And I considered doing three strands for the black just to give it that extra dark coverage because there's a whole good bit of black on this. I decided against it and so far I'm okay with it. I decided against it because um, the black is supposed to look like background and um, and I didn't want to do the whole thing in three strands and I didn't want um, the black to look like it was thicker like the I want the coverage to be decent of course which so far I'm okay with it um, but I didn't want it to look like it was in front of the stuff that it was actually supposed to look like it was behind because it's like dark trees and stuff in the background that's what the black is um, and um, you know, so we'll see. So far, so good. Um, I think it's going to be okay. Um, but I didn't want to do 25 count. And I didn't want to do three strands of everything. And, you know, whatever it was. Whatever, for whatever reason, I just didn't want to do exactly what they were saying to do. And so, um, so I'm doing it differently. And I hope that I, that, that it continues to, to work out. I think it will. Um, okay. So now I have I have a Disney Dreams. I have the Disney Dreams Lady and the Tramp, which I haven't touched in quite a while. It's been calling to me though. I have the Disney Dreams Lady and the Tramp. I'm doing this on my own fabric because the fabric that came with the kit is horrendous. Horrendous. So I just got some of my own fabric to do. And now this is not a UFO. I'm going to do this. But and usually I don't I mean you, you know you pay a good chunk for these kits. And um you know, I like, you know, you pay a lot. You pay for the stuff you get. And so, you know, you, it pains me slightly to substitute out the fabric, but I do regardless. I have good reasons for doing it, and I do it. Um, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to worry about that. But um, I usually do use the threads that come with a kit. And I am in this case. And I'm far enough into it that I'm not going to change. But the thread combination colors, I watched... Um, Mrs. Oso Crafty. And she not only uses her own fabric, but she also does the DMC conversion. Um, and I'm not really a thread snob. I usually use the threads that come with a kit almost always. But um, now that I've seen the, the hers and listened to her talk about why she did that, I feel regretful that I'm not doing that. But I'm far enough into this that I'm not gonna do that. But I think that the quality of the colors would be nicer if I was doing if I was doing it um, in DMCs. They just don't, they're just not as wonderful as I think they ought to be. So with this Disney Dreams, I am using the, the threads that it came with. But in the future, I think I will be doing what Mrs. Oso Crafty does and just get the get the pattern, pay whatever I pay for it, too much really for just a pattern, and replace all the threads. Because I think I would feel a lot more wholehearted about it if I did. So this is how much I have done. And it's not bad, but there is something about it. I just feel like the DMZ conversion would be just a little bit nicer. So, um, and, and you know, cross-stitch photography is bad, but I don't think they use these threads. <laughs> I don't think they use these threads. I think whoever did the model used nice threads, used DMC or whatever, and um, and um, not the the somewhat substandard threads that come with the with the project. But I'm gonna keep going this time, and I think it's gonna look good. But I think in the future I will. Um, Follow Mrs. Oso Crafty's example and just replace absolutely everything except the pattern. And maybe I can find a copy of the pattern, you know, from Stash and Load or something that somebody's done, you know, where they just sell the pattern. But even if they won't, 
you know, we could quibble over $15, $20 here and there. Um, but the bottom line is you put so many hours into these things and you need to enjoy them and feel wholehearted about them. And if you don't, you should consider doing something different, even if it costs you more money. That's just my opinion. So this is one I also showed in video number 11. This is um, Victorian Charm by Dimensions. Lots of people are doing this one. There's what it'll look like when it's finished. I'm doing mine on um, a 28 count. I believe it's um, I believe it's Jovalon. It's a navy. I don't think it is. Um, I don't believe it is. Um, it's the same. Mm, oh, sorry. It's the same for something I haven't showed you yet. Um, it, it, anyway, 28 count navy as opposed to the crap Ada that came with the kit. Um, and that is how far I am. I made big progress. If you watched my last video, you know I made big progress this uh, past week or so on it. So there's that. Oh, I wanted to share something else that I do with my orts. So um, I keep an ort jar like everybody else does. But one of the things I do, one of the things I started doing last year, which I really liked, is instead of, um, as I'm creating orts, I stick them right in the jar. Instead, I put any orts from a particular pro uh, project in, um, in a little baggie. And then when I finish the project, they all go into the ort jar. So that when I finish projects, so I don't have as many orts necessarily throughout the year because... I don't have all my orts I only have for things that I finished but you see like you know layers and I didn't bring my ort jar over to show so you know for 2017 oh well um, and it's nowhere near as impressive as my last year's 2016 ort jar because like I said a lot of my orts aren't from 2017 are not in there they're in these little baggies in with the individual projects but I, I like I sort of like seeing these gather as I'm working on a project and then it's really fun to stuff the this chunk of them into the ort jar all at once and you can kind of see layers that's just a, you know I'm a record keeper any little way I can find to, to like see things like that you know when I finish things um, uh, you know just adds to my pleasure. Okay, another Dimensions Gold collection. This one is a Gracious Era. I believe my husband got me this for my birthday. There's what it'll look like when it's finished. One of the best things about this project is all those snowflakes. Those are all French knots, and they don't chart them. You have to, you have to put them on yourself. So which bugs me a little bit. I know why, I think they don't chart them because they don't want to clutter up the the pattern, you know. So they just tell you to randomly do it. <laughs> That's a problem for me. I'm doing the, this on Ariel. I'm doing this on 36 count Ariel instead of the called for fabric. And I love how it's turning out. There you go, that's my project progress. Really beautiful. I love it. I love this fabric. And I know, it's a hand dyed with an almost full coverage piece. Um, and I know that's a little wasteful, I don't care. Uh, I addressed that in uh, a few videos back uh, and I won't reiterate because I don't have time. But I have my reasons and it doesn't bother me. Okay. Next. This is I've got some extra fabric stuffed in there. This is Coffee Break by Soda Stitch. And I am about halfway finished with this one. Here's where I'm at. There you go. I haven't worked on this one in a little while. It's easy to work on. I should get back to it. I'm doing it on like a 32 count. I think it's just MCG um, linen. Their MCG is funny. I know some of their, their, they have a bad reputation that's well deserved. Some of their fabrics are bad and some are not. And sometimes it just matters what you're working on. Like if you're working on something that you need to be square, which not all pa projects doesn't matter, or you need it to be a perfect circle and not like an oval. Um, 
you know, you might want to be careful. I have an example of a, of a project <laughs> that I'm using that is supposed to be squares and it's not squares and I don't care. I'm dealing with it. Um, but not all their, not all their fabrics are like that. Some of them are, some of them are, some of them are even. Um, and some of them are not. And I'm not 100% sure that I know which ones are which. And it may not be reliable anyway. Even if, you know, you say, okay, well, this fabric I got, it's it's even and this fabric isn't. I don't know that you can rely on that from uh, package to package. Because, <laughs> you know, they may just be sourcing fabric that is not, that is not, not great. Okay. Okay, get your thumbs ready. <laughs> Uh, I haven't talked about this project since my first video, which I got, well, I got 14 thumbs down on it, but then one of them went away. I, I current, last I checked, I had 13 thumbs down, which doesn't, which I notice and amuses me, but doesn't bother me. And, um, and one, um, pretty unpleasant comment that I could have deleted, but I didn't because, you know, if real honestly, it just doesn't bother me. As long as a person's not being super hurtful to some, to other people, then, um, I'm probably going to leave it. Um, because, uh, you know, I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you want a little bit of a discussion of this, of this, um, of this project, it's the president's, the president's, um, sampler, the U.S. president's sampler by Clouds Factory. I will simply say I am not stitching Donald Trump. I am stitching the Statue of Liberty in his place instead. Um, if you want an explanation of how I ended up doing this project and why I'm not stitching Donald Trump and why I'm stitching the Statue of Liberty instead, um, go to my number one video and about 36 minutes in, I talk about it. Um, and, um, you know, um, you can put your thumbs down here if you want. You can put your thumbs down there if you want. You can put a nasty comment anywhere you like. You're entitled to your opinion. I just don't give, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I stitch what I want. I stitch how I want. And I'm not going to spend any time stitching Donald Trump. I'm just not. <laughs> so I'm about halfway done with this one. Um, well, maybe a little less than halfway done because of the border, but I'm getting there. I'm doing this on 40 count birch. Um, one over two. And even though there's a significant amount of black, there's the coverage is very good, I think, on this. And the birch, I think, is a really nice like light neutral. This is Weigart color. Wait, right? Yes, it's got the orange. It is a Weigart. It's birch. B-U-R-C-H is the spelling of this color. Um, you can see the white and, you know, it shows up good, but it's not blinding. Um, and I did do a little something different on this where there's hearts here. I actually made Rhodes, Rhodes hearts. I was pretty proud of those. Um, I just, I saw the cross-stitched symbols for the hearts and I was like, hey, I can make Rhodes hearts. Those look kind of cool up there in the corner. So I did. Made some Rhodes hearts. Um, I like specialty stitches. Anyway, um, I stitch what I want. You don't have to like it. <laughs> okay, um... Uh, next. Oh. Well, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to bother to show a picture of that one. Um, because, you know, it's a president sampler. You can, you can tell what it's going to like, so, look like. So. Um, so anyway, the next one is Le Manege Dallas by Nimu. Nimu, I think. I'm not sure exactly what that, um, what the pronunciation of that is with the little symbols over the E. Um, and a uh, Lemonage Dallas. It's a Alice in Wonderland project, obviously. Um, a French pattern. Um, I am doing it on um, 36 count ale. Um, and I really love, really love this. It just looks amazing. It's a really high quality pattern, and um, there's some translation issues with the with the English, but um, I'm figuring it out, and I and it's turning out awesome. I, I really like it. Reminds me a little bit of a Mirabilia in that um, you know in the that it's not really confetti y so that's not hard. But there is nevertheless some very subtle like gradations of color um, that are really quite really quite beautiful. 
So I really like that. I'm I'm super super thrilled with that. Um, next. Okay, I'm gonna need to show a picture of this one. I just got the barest start on this one. Here's a picture of this one. It's I believe it's called Edwardian Christmas. Hopefully, I will be able to show a picture to you right now, and that you're not looking at my miscellaneous thing that I'm holding up to tell me to add the picture. Um. And I um I have this I have this digitally and I just barely got started on it. And I'm using it's full coverage basically, so I'm using and it's a large piece. So I'm using um blitz stitches method. Just barely started. Um and I am doing this on I'm convinced it's not particularly even. That's okay. I bought a, like, off of the bolt at Joann's, some what looked like linen and about a 36 count, I think. It was very, very cheap. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy that and stitch on it. And so far it's okay. I think I'm, I kind of did a test stitch on it and it's slightly uneven. Like you get a slight rectangle instead of a square. But in this kind of pattern, I think that's going to be okay. And I'm going for it. You know, if I get a good chunk of the way through and I realize it's terrible, then, you know, oh, well, I'll, I'll quit. But, um, but for now, that's, um, uh, that's what I'm doing with that. Oh, okay. Um, okay. The next is the Great Cheshire Pumpkin, which was a sow, um, by, um, Tempting Tangles. And the pictures you can find online that aren't other people's work, that it's, you know, words that aren't really okay to share without permission. But the pictures you can find online of the finished product are not very good, but I'm going to show you one anyway. So, and, um... Here is a picture of mine. Um, I'm doing this on um, what I presume is a coffee dyed Ada. That's very nice. Um, as Adas go, it's quite nice. It's very soft. Um, that um, Janny sent me. I won Janny's giveaway drawing um, a while back. And this is one of the things she sent me was this fabric. And I thought, well, that'll be perfect for that. And so, um, so I'm using it for that. I think it's a... I think it's like a 16 count. Um, I don't think it's 14 count. I think it's I think it's like a 16 count, maybe an 18 count. I think it's a 16 count um, Ada, and um, and I really like it. So there's that. All right, another gift. This is sent to me by Nell. Little Yellow House Crafts. Um, I won her giveaway. She sent me a bunch of stuff in her giveaway. And this is a pattern that I'd wanted to do for, you know, decades. And I don't know how, I don't think she had any way of knowing that. Um, and I guess I'll have to insert a picture because I don't have the picture of the finished product in my, in my, in my bag here. So here's a picture of grandmother's house. And, um, and I'm doing it on an MCG, but this is a nicer MCG. Their mushroom is not bad. I think it's a 28 count um, in mushroom. It is... Um, I believe it's a linen, because I see some... I see some minor slubs and unevenness, uh, uh, uneven thread thicknesses. Um, so I think it's a linen. Mushroom 28 count, which I actually really like as a as an inexpensive fabric. It's not bad and I can't I don't see that it's um, Rectangular I see I see, it looks to me like it's pretty good and that's my progress on that. This is so this is so gorgeous I love it and when I work on it. It goes fast. It doesn't take very long and it's that's by you know um, Marilyn leave it emblem, you know lavender and lace But it's her told in the garden series so sort of, uh, you know, like a Amish or Quaker or whatever look as opposed to, as opposed to, uh, I think it's Amish, as opposed to like her pretty ladies, historical ladies in beautiful dresses, uh, which is what, you know, most of the lavender and lace stuff is. Okay, this one is Glendon Place. It's my one and only Glendon Place currently. It is Gingerbread Grove. And um, I am 
doing it on just a, I think it's a, um, it's, it's Zweigert. It's not a hand dyed. Um, do I have the count? I think, I think it's 28 count. I think with all the beads and the, um, and the chronic and stuff, I think I stuck with 28 count. Um, or whatever was recommended. 28 count. They used Haven by Picture This Plus, and I, um, and I just used a Zweigart, like light blue, as opposed to spending the money on the hand dyed. Um, so there's my good start on it. Alright, so that is um, Gingerbread Grove. I love uh, I love the look of blend in place designs. I want to do I want to do more of them, and I want to make good progress on that one. Uh, I actually started that with my friend Susanna Rosencrantz. Um, neither of us. Have, last I knew, she hadn't made much progress either. <laughs> Next, I have Shores of Hawthorne Hollow, which, of which I am about a third of the way through. So, here's a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. I have, um, I'm doing this on gingerbread. 40 count, one over two in the called for NPIs which are beautiful to work with and worth every penny if you can afford them. If you can't or don't want to, um, this is still beautiful in DMC. Um, so I've done the first row. I've done one third of this and I love it. 40 count gingerbread. So as you can see this, that's a gingerbread that it's a little bit, that it's a, it's very sort of similar ish to like, um, the ale, except it's warm. That's the way I think of it. I think of it as like, you know, the same kind of color, brown, you know, about as dark, um, same kind of things show up well on it, but the gingerbread is warm and the, and the ale is not. So if I'm going for, you know, something creepy, like a Halloween-y thing or, or whatever, then I think the ale is, is more appropriate. Okay, this is my second of three um, hot air balloon projects, Moonlight Flight. Same um, 1998, same series. Um, I'm stitching this on 28 count Joe Ballon in navy. Same fabric I've used for, um, I got a big piece of it, like half a yard, and I used it for... Um, um, Victorian charm and um, something else. Can't tell you. Can't remember. Something else I think I already showed you. So this is like a lot of this is done. I burned out on that balloon um, because it's gorgeous, but that balloon was a real challenge. There's a lot of colors in there and not really confetti but um but not super easy to count um lots of beautiful look at the, the back stitch in it i've done the back stitch on the the back stitch is great on this um i'm pretty enthusiastic about this one not necessarily working on it right now but but just in general unlike the other balloon project where i'm kind of like eh, not sure how this is going to look when it's done this one is going to be is going to be pretty great looking and i've got a large chunk of it done okay next we have um, Octopus Treasure Cave, and I will show you a picture of it. So I'm doing this on 32 Count Midnight Tryst by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And it's a Chatelaine, in case you don't realize that. Um, and I love it. It's beautiful. And I have a significant chunk done. I honestly, though, with Martina dying, you'd think that I'd want to work on this more, but I actually want to work on it less. Like, it makes me sad to take, to, to think about working on it, which is I think the opposite response that a lot of people have, but um, 
I feel like I'm just going to be thinking about it the whole time about the fact that there won't be anything more from her. <laughs> but anyway, that's my activist character cave. I haven't worked on it in a long time. Um, let's see here. This is a kit by Design Works called Coffee Break, just like my soda stitch pattern is also called Coffee Break. This is the Design Works Coffee Break. The picture does not do it justice. Um, the colors in this are great. I'm doing my own fabric. Um, like a 28 count Monaco, I think, just available at Joann's. It's a little smaller than it should be, but the fabric that came with the kit was too small. It was a little smaller than it should have been too, so I'm okay with that. There it is. I've gotten, uh, Um, there's 12 blocks. I've got four of them done, so I'm a third of the way through with this one as well. Really like that. I did work on it recently. Um, I really, really like this, this, uh, this, um, this pattern. And here's my ort bag for this one. Lots of blues and browns. Look how pretty that is. That's why I like gathering the orts like this and then adding them into the, because I like to, I like to add, add them into the little bag and see it grow. Okay, this is my donut stitch. Um, my donut stitch. Alice in Wonderland. Just doing this on a uh, 25 count Lugana. Um, one over one to make it tiny and to save some threads because wow, this uh, thing calls for a lot of threads. Talked about it before. I'm doing this with a cone of 3808 because it calls for 25 skeins of 3808. So I just went ahead and bought a cone. And at least in the other donut stitch pattern I have, calls for an additional 20 skeins of 3808. So I got a cone. I talked about cones pretty thoroughly several videos back. Um, you can find that video because I believe that the the picture on the video is me holding up holding up a cone. I talk about the. Um, the small cones, which is what I have for this one, that's about 54 skeins, I think is what I, I remember calculating. And I talk about the big skeins, cones that I have for 310, that's um, like 200 and some skeins. Uh, and 270 skeins, I think. Anyway, um, so if you want to hear more about cones, um, you can check out that video. Very economical if you're going to use a lot of one color. Um, this one is Let Freedom Ring by Lila's Studio. Really an amazing pattern. I need to get this out and work on it again. Ginger Gerald Stitcher. Wait. I believe it's Ginger Gerald Stitcher. It's one of our guys. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Ginger Gerald Stitcher. It either finished this or is very close to finishing this. Um, and his is amazing. And he has some Stitch With Me videos. With it, and it's just mesmerizing watching him, watching him stitch. And um, I didn't get much done on this. I let's see, I'm doing this in 40 count, another another 40 count birch because it's one of one of my go-to neutrals that I have discovered I like. It's really good for these historical looking pieces, I think. 40 count birch. And um, I was working on this. I started this very enthusiastically, and I didn't have the specialty fibers for it. And so then I I got, it was lame doing that, like stitching around those. And so I eventually put it away and then I did get the specialty fibers for it, but I haven't since gotten it out. Now I've got the all the all the stuff needed for it. So um, next time I get it out, I'll, I'll have a much more enjoyable experience. Um, got one, 40 count birch, one over two. Okay, um, I showed in my last video and in my first video, I talked about these pin cushions that um, that are in one of the magazines. It's a ser it's series, and um, um, I want to do them all. And I've done just one of them so far. There's, I believe, there's 18 of them. I think there's six autumn and six Christmassy. I don't know if it's winter or Christmas, but it's Christmas-ish, and six summer. Um, it's weird that they don't have spring, but you know, whatever. Um, and um, and I've done the the um, I've done the hedgehog, and now I've moved on to one of the other um, one of the other pin cushions, and I'll insert a picture, possibly of the whole series here. But I'm working on my way through the autumn ones first because autumn's my favorite. And here is my 
is my start on one of them. I'm just doing these on inexpensive 14 count Ada. I'm doing them three, oh, three over one uh, because I want their pin cushions. I'm not going to use them as pin cushions necessarily, but they're full coverage and I really wanted the coverage to be thick. And um, so I'm doing them and I don't think they, they call for that. I think they call for two over two, but I am doing them two over one. I'm doing them three over one. Um, because I really wanted that like thick sort of um, needlepoint-ish almost um, coverage. So there's that. Those don't take long once you get into them. This is one of my other Mill Hills. Let me get really far on this. I think I worked on this on a like a vacation, like a, on a cruise ship. I think. Didn't get very far on it because I never do when I go on these trips. I never get very far on anything that I'm that I have. Um, Victorian House by Mill Hill. This is where I'm at. If I just got this thing out, I would probably stitch on it until it was done. But I haven't touched it in a very long time. There's that. Okay, and my third and at this point final um, um hot air balloon themed project. I will show you a picture of it right now. There you go. Um, it's a, uh, a Wizard of Oz balloon. I don't know what the title is. I don't think it is titled. And I'm doing this on 32 count milk chocolate Witchelt. And I rant for a while about um, not so much the evils of Witchelt, but what I've discovered about DMC and their durability change, apparent a durability change over the years. Um, as it relates to their ability to withstand the Wichelt fabric in one of my videos a few videos back. But this is going to be beautiful. This is by the Elfin Forest on Etsy. She has several really cool um, patterns and it's going to look beautiful but I'm never, I'm never using, I'm never using the Wichelt stiff linen again because it rips up, it rips up the um, DMC to a crazy degree. So uh, and it didn't used to do that. And I think it's because DMC has, uh, I, well, I pretty much know it's because DMC has changed. You can, for a thorough discussion of that, you can refer back to that video. Uh, if I get into that now, we'll be here all day. All right, so this one, I think this is Maria Diaz. It's, I think, I hope I'm not misspeaking. But anyway, it's in one of the magazines. I will show you a picture of it here right now. I can't remember what it's called. Some sort of like historical Christmas scene. Um, this is one of the first things that I, I believe this is the first project that I committed to doing Blitz Stitches Diagonal Parking Method, and I love it. So, there's where I'm at. You can see I'm using his method. And it's turning out great. I believe, I believe this is a 32 count. Um, just inexpensive fabric something from something from Joanne probably I don't know if it's mid uh, I don't know if it's MCG or what but it's um but it's inexpensive and it's working working just fine that's a mostly full covered piece alrighty I need to get this one out and touch it touch it some more This is my one and only Vickery collection. It's the only Vickery collection I have done so far, but I would like to do lots more. Their projects are a real challenge, um, but they're beautiful. And I like I like Easter, but um, I'm not religious, although I don't mind necessarily a religious-ish Easter project. Um, what I really like about Easter is I like the colorful the colorful eggs and the um, the chocolate bunnies and. You know the like the the cartoons we watched in like the 80s the 70s and 80s with was his name Dudley um, you know that I think were basically put out by the by the companies that are selling you the egg dying kits the little cartoons and um, this reminded me of that so this is Easter Egg Factory and it's great and I'm doing this again on some cheap fabric I think it's 32 count I think this is MCG. It's going fine though. And um, I think I, when I worked on this, I worked on it pretty solid. I worked on it for like three weeks and then I burned out, um, but I got a lot done. And now I'm looking at that and I'm going, that's really cool. 
I, there's Vickery, Vickery, the Vickery collection stuff. You just, you see a Vickery collection pattern and you know, you know it's theirs. Um, because it doesn't matter the subject matter. There's just something about their use of color and the combinations of colors. And you just immediately recognize it for the Vickery collection. And I want to do a bunch more of theirs. Oh, when I peruse their website, I just see so many things that I, or that I want to do. Okay, this is a really old whip. Like, I don't know how old, old, but really old. It's a Mill Hill. I don't know if it's a UFO. It might be a UFO. It's a holiday, simple treasured tote. And I threw out the tote because I don't ever intend to finish it on the tote. It's totally unnecessary. So I think I'll just make it an ornament. Um, but this is what it's fun to look like when it's done minus the tote and um, and this is where I'm at and I did this differently than I would do now I mean this is many many years ago that I did this and now with Mill Hill I would not do the beading until the end just because it kind of gets in the way as you're as you're trying to stitch so I um, but there's not I mean and I think I have all the beads and all the threads and stuff, and I have the pattern in this little baggie. I'm pretty sure I could finish this up in like a day. Um, so I should just do it, and then I can, you know, I can hang it on my Christmas tree. Back it with something and just hang it on my Christmas tree. And I should, I totally should. That's Mr. Holly Hoho is his name, but it just kind of cracks me up. <laughs> just is kind of an odd, odd name. But I don't really like the little tote, so I just chucked it because it was like taking up space and I was like, I'm never going to put it on that. Okay. Alrighty. This is Haunted House Welcome. One of my oldest whips. Quite a few years old, but I will finish it. It's for sure not a UFO. I worked on it... I think I worked on it in 2017. Um, it's been a while since I worked on it though. Here's a picture of what it will look like when it's finished. It's by Stony Creek. It's pretty amazing. I do like it quite a lot. And it goes fast when I work on it. And I've got a significant amount of it done. I love that. Tons and tons of Krynic. Krynic. Some of it's glow in the dark. Um, it's Stony Creek. So it's always, you know, Stony Creeks are like, they're always, um, there's always more to them than you think there is. But, but this one, um, you know, a lot of it, like where the, the, like the big moon and the ghosts and stuff like that, that's pretty simple. It's just, um, you know, glow in the dark. There's not a lot of, you know, not a lot of shading and stuff like that. So in some ways, this is a little bit simpler than some other, um, Stony Creeks. There's a lot of backstitching, a whole lot of backstitching in this one. Um, there's that. Okay. I've never shown you guys this. I think I've shown it on Instagram, but not very much because it just doesn't look that impressive. Uh, it's my Hade, my one and only Hade. I'm trying to stop myself from ever getting another, not because I don't like them, but because, you know, I think it's just madness working on multiple Hades. Some people do it and that's that's great. If they, if they want to, that's awesome. But I'm trying not to do that to myself because I don't think it'll work for me. Um, this one is for my husband. Hopefully he and I both live along live long enough to see this finished and hung up somewhere. It's Jupiter's Moon. It was a freebie pattern way back when. Here's a picture of it. Um, and I'm doing it on, tw I'm doing 22 count, one over one full cross. So 22 count Hardinger basically, which is practically speaking, it's the same as Ada. And, um, and one over one um, full cross. I tried like a 25 count. I tried I tried two over one um, tent stitch to speed things up and I just couldn't do it. Um, I'm really jealous of those of you who can. And it's not that it doesn't look good, but I just, I just um, and I do, you know, half stitches and other contexts and stuff, but um, but um, in this case, I just, I just couldn't do it. I didn't like it. So I switched to the 22 count one over one, which I have a, a, a Historically, I've done a lot of work on 22 count Ada. Back before I discovered linen, I did a lot of projects on 22 count 
Ada because I wanted them to look, you know, finer and more detailed and smaller, etc. So I did a lot of that before I learned, discovered linen and then when I discovered linen, for a long time I didn't touch Ada in any, in any, um, in, of any kind, in any count. Um, and now, you know, now I'm like, oh, I'll not work on anything. But, um, here is my Jupiter moon. And I'm doing, using Blitz Dish, Blitz Dish's method. And it's fun and easy to work on. Well, I'm easy. I mean, it, using Blitz Dish method, Blitz Dish's method, I find it fairly easy. Time consuming, but fairly easy. Like I don't get lost and stuff like that. And I, you know, it's kind of one of those, just one of those meditative type projects where I just, I look at the next little section and I just go on it and I just go on it. It's easy to, you know, it's like I just kind of, um, it's a different experience than, than many other types of projects where, you know, you're stitching motifs or, um, or you're doing cross country. It's just, it's just different. It's like, you don't see much progress, but you, you know, like, cause I'm marking off on the, on the chart that I've printed. It's a PDF pattern, but I printed it for my use. And, um, like I mark off each little, you know, it's kind of a, um, rhombus that you do when you're doing blitz stitches diagonal method, you're not doing squares. You're going like this, this, you're doing it section by section like that. And it's, it's just, you know, it's like you just keep going and you know you're never gonna get it done. And um, I mean, people do finish Hades, but it's hard for me to imagine that I'll ever get it done. And I like to get some things done, which is why I, like I'm not really allowing myself to start another Hades. I mean, at some point if I see like the light at the end of the tunnel with this one, then um, then maybe I will. But at this point, it's like I am never gonna finish this, and um, and so you know, I mean, I'd like to think I would, but I don't really pretty much feel like I'm never gonna finish it. But when I work on it, it's very just kind of meditative as I'm working on it. Like I'm not really seeing a picture up here, but I know I'm making progress and I'm marking off my progress on the sheet and. You know, I'm kind of doing it semi-mindlessly, just kind of doing what the pattern says without really paying attention to like the larger picture or context. I don't know, it's it's a different experience. And um, maybe that's what people get out of Hades all the time. I don't know. But, um, you know, I have to be in the mood for it, but it is. Uh, okay, this one um, is like Christmas treasure something or other. Okay, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. So there's a series. I think, I think this, I don't think that's it. Okay, sorry. Uh, Liz Almond, Blackboard Journey. Um, she put some like, Christmassy, not really ornaments, but Christmas um, things, blackwork things in one of the magazines. I'm using a 28 count sand linen that's in a tube that's inexpensive that I like in, um, in Joanne. I haven't worked on this in a long time, um, but there's my start on it. It's gonna have some gold beads. It's very pretty. Um, I think one of the things that makes me hesitate on it is um, it's really too big for an ornament. It's not quite the right size for like a Mel Hill 6x6 six six frame. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do when I finish it, finish with it. I'm having a hard time envisioning that. Although that shouldn't stop me because I frame, etc. hardly anything. Um, so, you know, why should that stop? Okay. Um, I do really like black work. And here's another black work. This is my black work. I think it's called black work hair. Here's a picture of the project. It's from one of the magazines. And I got a good amount of progress on this. It's all black, but the deal with this is, is that some of it is DMC. Some of it is actually sewing thread. And so it's, it's DMC, it's sewing thread in one strand. And it is DMC 310 in variety of number of counts of strands and using that same inexpensive fabric as I, as I did on the last one and so the effect you get the shading that you get that kind of looks like a sketch is due to the different 
strands of DMC and then the sewing, the black sewing thread that's used too. So it's really interesting. Anyway, it's, it's really neat looking. I'd like to do a lot more black work. Oh, you know, I wonder if I could make that. I wonder if I could, maybe I'll make those that I was just talking about into Biscornu. They'd be kind of big as far as Biscornu go, but they might make good Biscornu. I'll have to take another look at the center and see. Um, although I've seen that some, lately I've seen some Biscorni that don't have the, the center pushed in. I thought that that was like a, like you always did that, but apparently you don't have to. So maybe, you know, if you're doing something square that for whatever reason, that piece of the design you don't really want pushed in, you can just use Biscornu, I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? Um, but you can do a Biscornu without pushing it in. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking. Anyway, maybe I could do this as a Biscornu. Um, okay. I have my Gourmet ABC. It's another Design Works kit, very similar to the coffee one. I'm doing this, I had the idea to do this on 22 count Ada to make it tinier. Um, I don't like the fabric. This is not good 22 count Hardinger like the what I'm using for my Jupiter. I believe my Jupiter I'm using is Weigert 22 count Hardinger. This is a cheap 22 count Hardinger. Um, and it's, I just don't like it, but it's okay. It's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. Um, and there it is. It's still a vast improvement over the, um, did I show you? This is what it's gonna look like finished. Um, it's still gonna be a vast improvement over, over um, the fabric they sent with it, but, um, but I'm not super enthusiastic about that, about that fabric. So probably won't do that again. Okay, here is one where it's MCG and it's clearly not square because the pattern calls for a bunch of squares and, and it's good. mine are gonna be rectangle. I don't care. I'm just doing it. Whatever. <laughs> it's still gonna look nice. It's just gonna it's just gonna look a little rectangular instead of square. Um, this is a Jim Shore. Um, what's the front? Jim Shore. Um, like Twelve Days of Christmas Santa. And I'm trying to look at this. These are supposed to be square. They are tall. They are tall squares, otherwise known as rectangles. <laughs> so that's where I'm at on those. Uh, it doesn't really, like it doesn't bother me that much. I think when it's done, it's still gonna look good. If somebody looks at it closely, they may be like, wait. But probably only people who stitch would, would notice it. <laughs> Let's face it, I don't have anybody in my life, in my real like life here, that um, goes into my house and <laughs> would know any better. <laughs> Alrighty, and the last thing in my bin is my, the first six Alice in Wonderland characters by, by Brooks Books. Just the first six. I'm doing them all on one piece of fabric. So there we go. That's where I'm at on those. I'm not gonna show you a picture of these. I'm sure, I mean, maybe you're familiar, maybe you're not, but you, you know, one of them's done, you get the idea. And I'm doing them all on one, uh, one piece of fabric. But only the first six. I haven't been able to find this exact blue anywhere else. I can't, it, it's Swigert, I know that, but I haven't been able to find a match for it anywhere else. Um, and I would do the other six possibly, um, Sorry, a couple of wonky stitches caught my attention, um, but I don't care. Um, anyway, I would do this, uh, I would do the other six on another piece of fabric like this, but I'm kind of not, I'm kind of reluctant to do the, to buy and do the other six if I can't find this color of blue again. I don't know if it's been discontinued or what. No idea what it's called. Um, just haven't been able to find it. Okay, so that is my whip parade hour and 24 minutes. Um, I'm glad I didn't tack it onto the last video. But anyway, um, thank you for, for watching. And if you have any questions about anything, anything you saw here, um, hopefully all of my picture adding um, worked pretty good. Um, if I made any errors, I always rewatch my videos after I 
after I submit them. So if I made some errors that I wasn't able to fix and or anything like that, then um, anything glaring like a pic I said I'm gonna show you a picture and instead I'm not. Um, you don't, you can say whatever you want. It's not gonna hurt my feelings, but you don't need to point it out to me because I'll know. <laughs> it's just that if for whatever reason I um, I wasn't able to um, wasn't able to to share a picture. You, there might just be some funniness um, uh, here and there. Um, but we'll see. I'll try. I'll try to get all the pictures up like like they're supposed to be. Anyway, thanks for joining me, and um, uh, you'll see me again. Depending on when I get this posted, today is January the 8th. You'll probably see me, oh, you won't see me. Um, you won't see me, it might be like three weeks. I have something going on. I'm trying to think of the, the calendar here. I think in two weeks you won't see me because I'm pretty sure, pretty sure I have something big going on, but it may be in three weeks I have it. So it may be a stretch of time. It, it'll be either two, three, or four weeks before, um, from January 8th before I do another video because I have a big weekend thing coming up that's going to take over my life um, for an entire weekend, and I'm going to be recovering from that on Monday. Um, uh, the, the, there's a local board gaming thing, and one of my other passions is board gaming, and it's like... Friday night till two in the morning and Saturday all day till two in the morning and then Sunday all day and I have Monday off and I'm going to be wiped out so I'm not filming a video um so whenever that falls that's like the last weekend of January which um so um so anyway there may be a little bit longer of a stretch before you see um video number 13 from me um anyway I will talk to you guys later. Um, ask me questions if you got them. Um, and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.